What's up world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be discussing the render pipeline lifecycle and how vertex data goes through the GPU. Um, we're gonna talk about vertex shaders, uh, rasterizers, fragment functions, and how that all works and gobblates into uh, taking vertex data and turning it into pixel color values inside of our triangle. That's right, we're coloring in the triangle with red, green, and blue values today, baby. Well, let's go. Also, just want to point out, I put all of the previous episode files, well, not episode one, but all the files on GitHub, and so that's kind of cool. Also, that should have all the slides I've done in the past episodes and in the future episodes, and uh, also the full current project I'm working on. So I'll continue to add to that. You'll find that in the description. Go ahead, do that. Hit me up on Discord, still around, and yeah, let's get it into it. So before we get started with coding, again, I wanna cover this from a very top level. What you see before you is how vertice data goes through the whole function pipeline of the vertex shader, the rasterizer, and the fragment shader, and then pops out back onto the screen as a pixel. Now, how does this all take place? What does each one of these shader functions mean? Let's get into it. So we start with our vertices. In the last episode, we created our vertex array, which really was just a position array. So each one of these float threes represented a position in screen space. And what we did was we took these positions and we passed them to the vertex shader. Um, but what we didn't do is we didn't apply color to them. So we, a vertex isn't just float three. It's it's made up of other data as well. It's uh, you know it could be made up of color data, normals, position. Uh, another one is texture coordinates. These are very common things that we can apply to a vertex as a whole data object rather than just a position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create these three vertices you see before you, the red, the green, and the blue. And I'm gonna show you how these go through the pipeline. So the first thing that we do, once we call command buffer.commit, the GPU starts working. And anything that's bound in our render command encoder on that render pipeline state will start in the vertex shader. So we're gonna start with the vertex shader. What is the function of the vertex shader? Well, its main task is to process incoming vertex data, our red, green, and our blue vertex, and map them to a position on the screen. And this is screen space. So screen space, like I said in the last episode, is from negative one to one. That's like the positioning of screen space. A lot of times you'll see in games that X value could be at 400, the Y value could be at 200, Zeke value could be at 700. That's fine. That, that actually is a regular thing that will set those positions. However, those aren't the final values that get set. The final values that will be displayed for that pixel is in screen space. It'll be from zero or negative one to one. And the way it does that is in the vertex shader, we're going to combine matrices with that position and it's going to shrink it back down into a negative one to one uh, factor. So the vertex shader will place this vertex into screen space like that. And so now we have this just basic, you know, these are in, in, in space, but we don't have any color. You know, there's no shape attached to them. So we need to use the rasterizer. So this is a fixed function pipeline, meaning we can't update it. And the vertex shader passes all the data into the rasterizer. So what the rasterizer is going to do is it's going to figure out what pixels are sort of around this triangle and any fragment, that's what the gray spot you see before you with the black dot, any fragment that lies within that triangle that has the center of it will be drawn a color. So if it has the center of that pixel and a fragment is basically a pixel at this point, it's just a colorless pixel. Think of it that way. Um, we're gonna apply, we're gonna, we're gonna say this fragment is gonna be this pixel color, and that's gonna be interpolated. So in the vertex shader, what I failed to mention was we're going to set a position attribute on the position, and then everything else won't have any attribute. It'll just be, you know, the normal value. And why we do that is because the position, once it goes into the rasterizer, we don't wanna manipulate any of that data. The position is gonna come out exactly how it went in. But all of the other stuff, including the color, is going to get interpolated. And what that means is we're going to take this. So, so we have the red, the green, and the blue vertex right now, um, which all are represented in RGB, right? So if the top is red, green, and blue with a one value. The bottom is zero, one, zero with the green value. You, you know how red, green, and blue works. Um, halfway between red and green 
is 0.5. So for red, we're gonna give it a 0.5. For green, we're gonna give it a 0.5. And it will be, ha and, and blue will be zero because it's nowhere near blue, right? It's on the complete opposite side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the point of the pixel with relation to all three vertices, and we're going to color it based on all of those. So the center one is gonna be a third of all the colors, right? Uh, gray, uh, which which is a gray color, and that's because it's right in the center. Um, it's going to take into consideration uh, a third of red, a third of green, a third of blue, and uh, along those lines, we'll also talk about this little purple one that is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.5. Five. So I hope you kind of understand that. That's how color is interpolated throughout the triangle. And that's why the triangle is going to look the way it will. Because each fragment that lies within this triangle will get in an interpolated value. Um, it will be passed into the fragment shader one at a time. So what's gonna happen is each fragment, each uncolored fragment will go into the fragment shader. The fragment shader will then process it, right? And we're gonna change it, we're gonna do blah, blah, blah. We're gonna make this pixel color, this pixel color from what it was. And we are going to color in every single little pixel within this triangle. So um, this would be the final output. However, we wanna manipulate this pixel data. So we do that in the fragment shader. We get something, you know, a little bit brighter. And then what we do from, from the fragment shader is we'd return that final value. So on our screen, we can now draw that triangle since it's at those screen space coordinates with those colors interpolated and then the modified pixel colors, we can draw this triangle. In this example, we will not be um, uh, uh, drawing this triangle, we'll be drawing this triangle. Uh, this is going to be hopefully our output. Output, and uh, yeah, so that's how the the pipeline kind of works in the back end. That's how the GPU processes each vertice through the vertex shader, through the rasterizer, through the fragment shader to return a pixel. And for the most part, besides command encoders, and forget I even said that, this is the render, like the life cycle of a pixel. Uh, of a vertice into a pixel. So keep that in mind. This is really important when it comes to any game engine or rendering pipeline because this is how we draw graphics. Let's get into some code. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create our vertex object, right? I said, we're no longer, we're just gonna work with positions. We're gonna work with this model called a vertex. So I'm gonna create that as a struct way up here at the top of the game view. So our ver struct vertex has a position inside of it. So that will be represented by these numbers right here. So these will now be the position. The color we have yet to create will be a RGBA float four. So this will be a float three and this will be a float four. So instead of populating the vertices array with float threes, you guessed it, this needs to be a vertex array. So I'm gonna replace the float three right there with a vertex. This now needs to be var since I can't create this on the fly. I'll need to create a function to do so. So down here before create buffers, I'm gonna create a function called create vertices that will populate this vertices and I'll talk about when I'm done. Okay, so now that I've done this little function down here, we'll wanna call this before we do create buffers, since our buffer is gonna be populated with the vertice data, we'll need to call it before create buffer. So I'm gonna call create vertices right there. So we don't need any of this code, but notice real quick that this is exactly this, this is exactly this and etc. So these positions are now represented in our vertex model that we can pass to the GPU. So I'm gonna delete this code and I'm gonna replace it with an optional. And if I build it, just make sure real quick, we should have a build successful. And we did. So now we're populating this vertices array, right? And we're setting the bytes of the vertices array in the buffer, but we're still doing a memory layout of float3.stride. And we don't wanna do that. We wanna do a vertex.stride. So let's replace that with vertex. So now instead of doing a float3, which is 16 bytes, we're now doing a, a, the memory layout that's tried a vertex, which is 32 bytes. So this will be 32 times the count, which is three. So it'll be 32 times three, which is math. And so now that we have our vertex buffer and we're binding it at index zero, there's nothing else we need to do on the CPU. The CPU is done. Uh, we're setting the vertex buffer. Let's go to the myshaders.metal and check it out. So um, what we'll need to do first 
is create a struct of a vertex that represents the exact same model that is on the GPU. Since we don't have access to that from this file, we will need to create one that is similar to that. So in the game view, we had uh, vertex position color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a struct here called vertex in, and it's basically just the vertex that comes into the vertex function. Um, and then it will use that same exact order too. So position then color. So watch this. Okay, easy peasy, right? So the position is a float three, just like it is on the CPU. And the color is a float four, just like it is on the CPU. And so, and you remember we're binding the buffer with vertexes, right? So this float three is no longer a float three. It is a vertex since that's what the buffer is filled with. It's, a, it's full of this exact same model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this with a vertex in. So it's gonna be vertices of vertex in which means this right here used to be returning a float three, which was our position. So instead of calling this, well, we have a model now of a vertex and we can just call that dot position. So we're gonna call vertices at vertex ID dot position. And if I were to go ahead and run this and see what the output is, I should get a nice white triangle since we're not using the color yet, right? Um, but really the next goal is to utilize the color. Let's stop that and go into how to make color up here. So, um, like I said in the explanation, we go from the vertex shader into the rasterizer. Now the rasterizer is a fixed function pipeline, which uh, pipeline function, which means we, we don't manipulate it. We can do raster order groups, which you don't need to worry about right now, but really the rasterizer is just off in space. So any, whatever we were to return from the vertex shader will go to the rasterizer and we can kind of define the properties of what is going to the rasterizer so it knows what to do with them. And I'll, I'll explain that as soon as I create our rasterizer data. So I need to create a rasterizer data object that goes off into the rasterizer. So let's do that. Now our rasterizer data is, um, you know, it's, it's the same exact thing, except for this time with the position, I'm gonna need to use the position attribute qualifier. And just like I said in the example, or the explanation, we need this position on position because anything that goes into the rasterizer will be interpolated between all three of those triangle points or whatever points you're passing to the rasterizer. So we need to say, this is the position. Don't touch these values. Anything else that is not marked with this position attribute will be interpolated between those three. So color will be interpolated to each pixel value. Uh, if we had a float banana, the banana will be interpolated related and whatnot, you know, it kind of goes on. But for now, we're just using position, make sure that that stays the same as soon as it comes out of the uh, rasterizer and color. So we go into the rasterizer. Um, so what I need to do is instead of returning a position into the rasterizer, I need to return rasterizer data. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of the vertex shaders float fours returning with rasterizer data. Okay. So now that I've done this, I'll explain what I just did. So I created a rasterizer data object, one of these things, um, and then I populated it. This is the position that I was returning from before. So exactly the same position. And then the color now is going to be vertices.color. Um, so whatever vertex in dot color, right? Um, and so it knows now that I'm creating, I'm creating fragments for each one of these. And I'm, I know that this fragment will have this color, but we're not doing anything with that yet because it's coming out of the rasterizer un, like it doesn't do the shading it doesn't populate the color it just figures out what color it's going to be so what we need to do is in our basic fragment shader the rasterizer will come out of the rasterizer into the fragment shader as an object so we need to take that in as a parameter and then we can process it and i'll show you that right now so we we're going to take in the rasterizer data as a parameter and then we're going to create we're going to return the color of the rasterizer data and that's pretty much that's very easy i'll show you how just watch this and that's that now that we are taking in our rasterizer except i'm missing okay sorry i missed one thing so we, we're taking in the parameter of rasterizer data but we need to use one attribute qualifier so every every parameter needs an attribute qualifier and for this case we need something called stage in and that's because we're doing it per pixel or per fragment um so it's gonna every single fragment will come through this 
uh, fragment shader, figure out what color that pixel is and update it. So this will be per pixel. So it's gonna say the color of that pixel is this pixel. So we can do anything we want. We can do like color times, or color equals color times four, and then it will be really white. You know, uh, We can manipulate the color here. But now that we have this implemented and this implemented and our rasterizer is doing whatever the hell it wants to do, we're gonna press play. And I'm hoping to see this beautiful color. Oh, there's a, I'm expecting something. What am I missing? I'm missing this guy. So make sure you put that. And now we're gonna miss one more thing. Sorry, people. Right there. Now run. Everybody's happy. Build succeeded. And a colorful triangle appears before you. Pretty freaking sweet, right? Um, just to reiterate exactly what we did to create this awesome, magnificent colored fragment. Now we're passing objects through that's crazy uh, on the game view we created a vertex that vertex is now going to be our vertices array so we're going to pass in a bunch of vertices um, in our we're going to populate our buffer with those vertices and in our shader file we're going to take in those same exact vertices and we're going to process them out to the rasterizer the rasterizer is then going to go into uh, the fragment shader and the fragment shader is going to populate the pixel i know i'm reiterating but it's important and uh, my hope is that these steps that we just went through to create this triangle that's colored, the way I learned this and I suggest you do is to delete all your code and go back and do it again. And then delete your code and go back and do it again. Because the more you do it, the more you iterate over those steps, the more it's just gonna sink into your brain and it's like, oh, I get it. Because maybe right now you're very new to metal and you don't understand what's going on. but. Really, you just need to figure out the fundamentals. And these are very fundamental aspect. Like this is the most fundamental thing is this is the Hello Triangle. And there's actually a page I'm gonna link in the description um, called Hello Triangle Documentation on Apple already that I based a lot of this off of because they did a really good job of explaining it. Um, but I'll put that in the description. You can go check that out. It has a lot more detailed, but just keep doing it. Like create a Git repository and then update it, update it. Try to get as far as you can. So uh, start with creating vertices out of float fours and then try to get there. And then, you know, if you can't get any farther, go look at the code and get a little farther and then go back and delete everything and start from scratch, including creating, you know, the main storyboard and just keep doing it over and over. And I, I can't iterate that enough. Um, this is very complex stuff. If you're new to this, if you're not, screw it. You've done OpenGL in the past and this is all the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, good for you. That's awesome. But for you who's trying to learn, my suggestion is just do this over and over and over again. You'll get it. I promise. And it's really cool once you get it because the world changes. So, um, yeah, that's it for this episode. Next week, we'll talk about vertex descriptors and, uh, using those in the render pipeline. That should be a little bit shorter episode. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit me up on discord or don't, doesn't matter. I'm okay with it. Uh, so yeah, see you next time.